just a heads up that we are not clinical experts. And if you need professional support, there will be some links and resources listed in the podcast description. I can't remember a time when I wasn't deconstructing my own body and having opinions about other people's bodies too. And it always felt normal. I didn't. My mom did it. My friends did it. It was on TV, in movies. It was everywhere. Body image is something so many of us struggle with. How do we break that cycle? How do we find peace and liberation in our bodies instead of pursuing some bullshit ideal? I'm Diane Guerrero. And yeah, no, I'm still not okay. This week, my sister Dasha Polanco shares with us how she's learned to love and accept every part of herself. I met Dasha on the set of Orange is the New Black. She was playing Dayanara, I was playing Maritza, and we were part of the Latinx gang, 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 gang. You were just chilling there, just sitting down, and it was right by hair and makeup. I think my room at that time was by the staircase. And so I looked over, and I was like, hey, are you good? And there was a lot going on on set that day, and and the intensity was really high. And Mm -hmm. so I remember that I approached you. And um, after that, we just had a really intimate conversation about what was going on and Mm -hmm. so forth. And I'm like... You don't remember that, yo. I remember feeling really lonely and unsure of myself. I wanted to be anybody but myself because I felt like I was all wrong. I was small. I didn't feel like I had a lot of power. I felt shrimpy. You know, back in middle school, people used to call me shrimp. (laughs) So anyway, I was feeling like a shrimp that day. This was my first show. I was nervous. And instead of thinking of the work, I started thinking about how small I felt and was. I didn't know how to be in a room full of women that looked and felt so confident. But then again, you don't know how people are feeling. Anyway, Dasha approached me. And I remember this amazing glow that Dasha gave off from the moment I met her. She radiates confidence and positivity. She's fun and caring, and she knows how to have a good fucking time. I call our adventures together unicorn moments. Do you remember when we went to St. Nick and we was trying on the $5 glasses? (laughs) Do you remember that? St. Nick, a donde? St. Nick in, in Washington Heights. You don't remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember we were trying on the glasses on the street, and, like, people would stop us, and, like, they were like, oh, my God, you guys are from Orange is New Black, and we were just, like, look at each other, and we're like, holy shit. Like, yeah. people are, like, recognizing world. us. Well, we had, That's like, a beautiful thing that you glasses. express that. We have unicorn moments. We have sunglasses on, staircases. I mean. It's always like that. Our friendship begun as a... Um, my Little Pony. <laughs> like, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was yeah. like, I don't know. It was magical. What can I tell you? And as her career has taken off, Dasha started speaking about a part of her life that's taught her a lot over the years, her body image. I, at a very young age, had, you know, I was more of a thicker girl. Everybody around me was slim. So it was like, well, I am the bigger girl, you know? And it mm-hmm. was like, it was a, more of a fat thing and a skinny thing. Mm-hmm. And so you you go and forget about the 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 having lighter hair and having lighter eyes, but the, as far as body, the fat thing and the skinny thing, girl, you're fat. I remember I had a best friend in third grade, and I used the bathroom in front of her because you know that's what girls do, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like using the bathroom. She came over to my house, and as I'm sitting, she's like, "You have a big like stomach. You're fat." And she was in ballet, and she was really really skinny. And I think that that was the time 
that was one of the times that um or moments that I remember as me taking that extra look in the mirror and actually paying attention to something that I never paid attention to. Mm. Let alone I'm sitting on the toilet. And when we sit, our stomachs always, you know, <laughs> but we're not, we don't have the capacity to understand, right? The the logistics of body movement and how that affects posture, how that affects how your body looks, right? Right, like we're not looking at ourselves like that unless someone is kind pointing of it out. pointing it out at you, yeah. You know, you pay attention to what's highlighted. And then, you know, in, in your family also, like, don't eat a lot because you're going to get big. You know, don't do not do this. Muchacha, tu come mucho. Or things like that. And and I always felt like, wow, I have to really pay attention. Like, the only way I'm going to get to where I have to get is because if I look a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know? And then you start going into different stages in your life. You know, you go from your childhood and then you go into the, when you become a teen and then you become an adult and then you start getting all these, these opinions and these standards from who you have around you, whether it's your friends, whether it's who you're dating. And I think it comes down to how much, how much or how important for you is to love yourself first and how can we start there? How, at what point do we like really start having the conversation about Loving yourself and making yourself first is not selfish or conceited. Growing up, I didn't know the difference between loving yourself and being conceited. Like for me, it always felt like you were supposed to hate on your own body so other people wouldn't think that you were, like, were too into yourself. Because then you'd be subject to people pointing out your flaws and then comparing you to a model or a video girl. Oh, you don't got this, you don't got that. Like saying, I love myself... I love the way I look. That was not a thing. And if you did, you'd probably get some mayonnaise thrown at you. But I think even more damaging was that I never heard my mom say that she loved herself. How, how did the women in your life talk about their bodies? When I, my mother, when I was growing up with her, I had a really intimate conversation. Um, and it was a lot of like an open book, but also like... I was her journal. So she did a lot of in confidence and uh, confessing a lot of things that she might necessarily didn't have with anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that creates a lot of anxiety and a lot of like, well, what am I supposed to do? You know, because she, she didn't like her jaw and she was slim. She had a beautiful body. She was like really slim with booty, very shapely breast. She was this petite woman. Mm -hmm. So on the contrary to me, I was, you know, uh, a larger frame. Mm -hmm. So as I got older and the conversation got more intense as far as like body wise and like she wasn't more so focused on the physical. She always took care of herself. She was more so putting up her shield mm -hmm. and like she would like to look cute. You know, she would do her hair. She would do her makeup. No, 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 no. I no tiene que se cuidar. Say yes. And I think that that was a lot of... um practice of protection versus like, I really love myself. Mm -hmm. Because you put up with a lot of other behavior that necessarily didn't represent loving yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of like, just abusive behavior. So for me, body positivity has a lot to do with mental health. And how much are you willing to really discover the layers and take care of, of what the source is. Mm. And then everything that's superficial, whether it's like you're not happy with, with how your lip, the size of your lips, whether you're not happy with like the fact that you gained weight, that you, you know, you, you gained 20 pounds or whether you just can't gain weight, you know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. you don't feel comfortable, like you have a smaller ass, you know, you want to get a bigger butt, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Like there, we're living in a society now where... When you look at the source and you and you do that, you take that moment to really go back and really evaluate your childhood or where it's coming from. It's very important for you to be able to embrace and move forward mm. what's now body positivity. What What is body positivity? Well, for me, body positivity, um, it's acceptance, it's inclusion, it's celebration, it's uplifting regardless of gender. Um, regardless of cultural differences, 
I don't believe in beauty standards. I don't believe in having to belong to a certain, not cult, but group of people that... That look a certain way. Yeah, like, it, it, I think for me, the definition of body positivity is the freedom of having your personal preference. Mm. Um, as long as you're not hurting yourself and as long as you're doing it from a, a place where it's what you desire mm -hmm. for the purpose of your confidence and for the purpose of your growth, mm -hmm. I'm all that. Now, when you're doing things to change your body physically and you're hurting your body, then it's not something that I think is... I think it's something that we should speak about and I think it's something that you should seek help for. Right, right. Because it goes hand in hand because whatever you're fixing, like you said, when you don't get to the source of what's really, really bothering you, why are you not feeling enough or why are you feeling mm, like whatever you have isn't enough? And that's the thing. When you say that, this is, I hear that so much like when you're not enough, but enough for what, right? And like enough for who? Because there's so much pressure on body and what you're supposed to look. Mm -hmm. But for who and for what purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to ask yourself because it goes down a rabbit hole. We start here. Let's say we get our, 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 we get our tits done, we get our breasts done, we, we enlarge them, we get breast reconstruction, and then something happens, we're not happy there. So we have to adjust there. Mm -hmm. You know, now if you don't have a, a big ass, you don't have big titties, then, you know, then it's not, you're not the thing. And we're in denial about how these booty standards affect us. But also, this look, D, this is something that I always say, right? I'm mm -hmm. all for it also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always try to check myself if I find that I'm judging someone and I'm not as open as I would like to be. And I continue to be. And I think that for the most part... I'm a, I'm free space. I'm all about free range and this is you, this is your life, do what you what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And if that's what makes you happy, I'm all for it. Cuz if I want to do something and that's what makes me happy and tomorrow Dasha wants to like, you know what? I want to get my boobs done. Then I'm going to go get my boobs done because I want to do it. Right. The problem where I, where po body positivity comes in is what is the reason you're doing it for? Why are you doing it? And um if then you use that as a way of feeling as if you are the righteous or you are superior to those that don't, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. there's like these little clicks that I've noticed in my personal life mm -hmm. in general, and I'm not, I'm just speaking in general, we come across where you see clicks of women that prefer plastic surgery, clicks of women that are bigger in size, plus size women, you know, and so on, and the labels continue. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a thing of like, the competition, but mm -hmm. also, oh, you need to go tighten that up. You need to pull this or you need to, girl, that cellulite girl, no. You know, and it becomes a thing uh -huh. of that instead of a thing of like, yes, 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 yes. Okay, we have that. We have variety, right? You want a trail mix. You don't want a honey nut <laughs> roasted <laughs> cashew. You want trail mixes. You know what I mean? Yes, we should fucking celebrate all of our bodies. And you know what? I'm gonna take a stand right now and celebrate my small butt, formerly nicknamed No Butt, and tragic ass nine comments from everybody. I now dub myself Sweet Baby Muffin Butt. We'll be right, babies got back with Dasha after the break. When did you realize the need to prioritize your mental health? Well, I had my kid um, as a teen, my daughter, the Sani. And that was, you know, I didn't get enough time, 17. Uh, I didn't get enough time to allow my body or to get used to my body or to for it to do its thing. And when I say thing, I mean for me to like embrace it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I was uh, in high school one minute and I was playing sports and I was already feeling like I'm fat because I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat. And that pressure of like even taking like supplements to like get skinny, mm -hmm. right? 
taking, you know, all these programs. We have all these programs that, you know, especially in our communities, they're like, oh my God, if you take this, girl, just do this and you're hungry. You know what I mean? You're taking yeah. a pill that's making, you're, you're like sweating under your arms. You're like, wow, I really just want to have school lunch. I really want to drink that and I'm not doing it. And you don't realize that you, you don't really understand your body and what's it going through. You're going through so many hormonal changes. Mm. Hormonal changes are so important for us to understand at different stages of our lives so that we can understand the choices that we make mm. and why things are happening. So enjoying sex, but yet having this issue with my body, I kind of made choices that were contradictive to what I was doing, right? Because mm -hmm. I didn't have a problem dating, honey. I didn't mm -hmm. have a problem getting a little boyfriend. Right. But I had a problem. Like, I remember, that, like, when I first, my first couple, you know, my when you start dating and you have your first relationship, you turn off the light because you don't want them to see you. Right. You give an explanation as to why your body is like that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I remember, now that you're yeah. speaking about this, oh my God. I remember, like, with my first, it was about that. Um, I want to keep the lights off because, you know, I have my, I have a little stomach and, but I really, like, when I look back, I'm like, girl, you ha didn't have nothing. <laughs> you yeah. were like, you were perfectly fine. Yeah. And then it gets to a point where I go from that to not really embracing my body and having all these restrictions, whether it's like at the moment of like having sex to then becoming pregnant mm -hmm. and then your body changes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Your boobs start growing, you you know you start noticing things, whether it's the the change of pregnancy, stretch marks, and and the gaining of the weight, and then as soon as you give birth, you gotta lose that weight. You can't don't let that pregnancy get you, girl, because once you're pregnant, that's it. Right. Después que tú mira, de, después que tú para te vas a dañar el cuerpo. Oh my god, that whole idea of like you ruin you ruin your body. When you have children, it's like, well, then you want us to have children, but then it ruins our bodies. So then we need to, we have, we're, we're under so much pressure. And then on top of that, we don't talk about how these distorted views of our own bodies will affect us that are affecting us now and will affect us down the line. So we should be doing that work, that mental health work, that, that spiritual and soul work that we need to do in order to like live happy lives otherwise we're just going to be like chasing this idea that we had when we were like kids about how we were supposed to look absolutely i mean i don't know what how was it for you in school but for me it was like all the girls that had that had the big tits those were the fly girls you know during school i was made fun of because i had a big ass mm -hmm. so one of my closest friends nakia they used to call her um her ass is an apple and Dasha's ass is a watermelon. And oh my God. It was just like that fucks with you after a while. And your lips, like, oh, lizard lips, bubble lips. And, you know, and then you start looking at the girls that, you know, they develop quicker than you do and they are shaped differently. And then health class is about just like anatomy, but we're not really, it's not really health education, right? Right. It's like, right. Because mm -hmm. there's no focus on mental health. How, how are at we going to talk about health education if we're not talking about mental health as well? Especially at a time where we're really going through hormonal changes again, mm -hmm. and we're having so many hormonal imbalances, and then we're, we have so many questions, and some of us can have those conversations with, at home. Some of us don't have the access to have these conversations, mm -hmm. and some of us don't know how to put this into words. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to express that. Mm -hmm. because we need language. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that took roles in my life as to affecting how I felt and how I would go home and like want to take a scissor and like say, oh, I just hate being so fat. And I would do all these things to myself that now I'm like, wow, if I would have just spoken to somebody that would have told me this is normal, it's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. it, it would have saved me so much time and the decisions and I would have enjoyed things differently also. Mm -hmm. Like allowing myself to understand that when I put myself first and I come across a relationship that I have a right or a choice to say, no, you're going to turn on the light and this is who I am. And, mm. you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not necessarily that also, but it takes time. I feel like everything takes time and every 
to find true harmony and to be balanced, you have to really break things apart, prioritize, single out, face. You have to face. You have to take off the armor. You have to be vulnerable. Mm. All these things are good. All these things have to happen. We need to shed. We need to fall. We need that. I love what you said about understanding your body. That's so important. I know in the beginning of your career, you said that you didn't feel seen or fully accepted in Hollywood. And I wonder how much mental space does that sense of belonging take up for you? I've always had this sense of understanding why I haven't belonged, right? Mm -hmm. So you are an immigrant, you come to this country and you don't belong, right? Mm -hmm. And you just continue to not belong. And so deciding to do something you love or something that is not actually foreseen in our communities as abundantly as it should, mm -hmm. the images that were fed into my subconscious were of those of like the TV novelas, you know, and um, the Sabado Gigante and the models and this stuff. And so being able to be part of the industry now, I'm still... I still am learning how to take it all in because I definitely think that we're moving into a more positive direction and we're moving into more in inclusive direction. And yes, we are, but I definitely think that it's very, it's, it's very small and there's a lot of more work to be done. And I always say it, it keeps on moving forward. But we're mm -hmm. going to come across people that will shift it and move it even further than we think. And I think Orange did his job at, at the time that it had to do his job. And it transcended down to the individual um, contribution that we all took part in and doing what we can. And again, having the ability to express these things in a safe place, I think, is important. Mm -hmm. So like now in our industry, when we look at I just want to be included as to I am essential. I am one of a kind. Mm. There's only one me. Mm. And it's worth having me. Um, mm. You look at things differently. Mm -hmm. You're like, there's not another me, right? There's, yeah, we can fit the similar group or whatever, you know, wherever you want to group me in, but there's only one me. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show that body positivity starts with the inner self. Mm -hmm. so you could have somebody like me that looks exactly like me, but that doesn't speak or doesn't carry themselves or has just totally different energy, right? And will that be as accepting as somebody that brings forth um, a different light or a different sense of... So in the industry now, I'm seeing that more often and I'm seeing that Look, we have to be honest. Time passes. You're hot one moment, you're not hot the other. <laughs> That's the truth. You can yeah. be popping right now. Right. And tomorrow, you're not. Mm -hmm. And you're in the hands of uh, a lot of people. And mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that for yourself and for your sanity, that you understand that what's for you is for you. How you look is of importance, it's valuable, mm -hmm. and your differences should not be discarded. And I've had to learn that. I didn't realize that my relationship with my body image had become unhealthy. It was like taking over my thoughts. And fearing, right? I think it's fearing, right? Mm -hmm. Like we fear certain things and we don't want to say that we fear it. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, oh, I fear. Aging. Right? Aging like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, right. honestly, like, because my mom looked mad young and it's, I love, I love youth. And I like, I enjoy taking care of myself, mm -hmm. yo. Like, y'all don't want to take care of yourself. That's good. Like, that's you. But I enjoy taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. I like taking the time that I wasn't able to because I had dedicated myself so much for other things in my life mm -hmm. and putting myself behind and behind and behind that I didn't pursue even, it caused a hindrance in even me pursuing this 
at a, at an earlier stage in my life. Mm-hmm. And I know we hear it all, but the timing is now. No, 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 no. I get it. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that I didn't see myself. I didn't believe in what I felt and the love for artistry, to be an artist, to to sing, to dance. I, like I didn't see myself because I thought that I was ugly. Mm-hmm. I thought that I was fat. Mm-hmm. I thought that was, oh, I don't look like everybody out there. And that's a problem. Because you don't want to be like everybody else. No, you don't. Do you really? No. Like, do you really? Like, no. There's certain things that we say, oh, I, well, I want what she got, like that Chanel bag. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll get there. Um, <laughs> so always that. And like, I was always taught to like, don't let nobody put you down, right? Mm-hmm. But it's okay for you to put yourself down. That yes. doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. So I'm so people are like, oh, I wouldn't think that you have that issue because, you know, when you go to these events and when you go to this carpet and all this stuff, and I'm like, because I'm not gonna look crazy, you know? <laughs> when I walk into a place, I'm like, you cut the shit and you go out there and you do what you have to do. You're shining, then, baby. You know, and then when you go home, you're like, oh my God, look at this picture. <laughs> what the hell? And I'm like, whatever. Whatever, and then you get the crit, you know, you get criticized so much, and and I think that I spoke to my friend yesterday, um, Simba, and he was like, "Yo, the moment that you start making hard decisions, your life becomes easier. Mm-hmm. It's those easy decisions that make your hard might make your life harder." And I was like, "Oh my God, I love when people just drop a gem, right? That I need to hear and be reminded, right?" You need to be reminded how beautiful you are and that you're beautiful because of who you are, because you're just my poly pocket. And it's not because you're small. It's <laughs> just that you you open that little case and it's like so much fun with this little po- She has so much going on. <laughs> so tell me, like, now that we're on this, you know, creative tip, because I see you fucking blooming and I love I love to see it. Yeah, so I I have been um, doing more songwriting and creating music and finding other ways to express my fears. Um, Mm. And songwriting is a beautiful thing. Poetry is a beautiful thing. And I started journaling more. And and eventually my one of my goals is to open up about body image and write a book about that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I've been writing more about my experience, but actually writing about the experience of what am I doing to change emotionally, mentally, and physically Mm -hmm. to find the true moment of where I am free of this weight, that I'm in the present moment. And I'm like, you know, because right now I'm transitioning from, I love, you know, I love to work out. I'm mm-hmm. a workout girl, mm-hmm. and I'm transitioning from that point of working out to lose weight and just working out every day, but also accepting that, oh, this is my size now, because mentally I see myself still fat, mm-hmm. but physically I'm not. I'm mm-hmm. healthy. I I look good. My clothes fit good. What am I worried about? Mm-hmm. So you have to break from that. You have to like say, oh, this is okay. Mm-hmm. Today I could I could be a medium. Tomorrow I could be a large, and it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I love. Let me tell you something, Diane. I really, I enjoy being sexy. Mm-hmm. I enjoy the feeling of being sexy. Yeah. And there's certain things that make me feel that whether it's like me right out of the shower, no makeup on, and smelling fantastic, or whether it's me like working out sweating, and I see myself in the mirror and I'm like, wow, why? Because I'm doing things that are for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I'm going to the spa and I'm like, ooh, I want to get this. I want to try. Yes, I want to try. Next time I, next time I come, I want to get a microdermablation. I want to get some radio frequency <laughs> and like do anything because I want my skin yes. to look this because it's for me. It's for you. For women out there that don't understand that the moment that you start like, no, 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 no. I'm doing this for me, boo. I know it's winter, but I'm still going to get a pedicure. Yeah, because I like seeing my toes done. Thank you. <laughs> and you start doing that. There's something about that that you're like, wow, I'm I'm actually 
enjoying the time that I spent in the skin that I have been blessed with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what are what are some of like the the practices that that you engage in to connect and to honor your body? Well, I'm all about I'm all about if you have the means to go get a facial, if you have a, the means to go get a massage, you know. If not, you know, there's practices you could do at home. Coconut oil, like I take oils and I massage them into my scalp. Um, if I can't do that, sometimes. It's not doing nothing. Mm-hmm. It's not doing nothing eating a bag of chips yes. and ice cream. Yes, together. Like this. And your bed, like on your couch. Doing you know, what you want to do. What, what I, like for me, my freedom and doing what I want to do is most sacred. And what better than you to be able to like when you have your period, let's say, and you just don't feel like doing nothing but just like having warm compresses and and being cozy in your bed and just whether you want to scroll on your phone or whether you want to watch an old movie Legally Blonde I don't know coming to my Rocky whatever it is that you want to watch Mon- Casablanca whatever it is that right there is such a privilege mm-hmm. I'm into all that I'm into like oh my god this oil is good for this I do it uh-huh. oh my god eh eh Let's go to this retreat, like a spiritual retreat. Let's do that. We go, we go to a spiritual retreat. We're going to do it. It's going to be all whatever. And let's do I love having an experience for myself. Trying And the things. more and more I have these experiences and the more and more I am, I have the access to it and I'm blessed enough to do what I love first and foremost and to connect with people, but to experience life in different ways. Yo, that allows me to walk out of wherever I'm at walk on set, be a parent, be a girlfriend, date this one. It's just, I stand in my power. I love that. I love to see that. I love seeing you stand in your power because it helps me stand in mine. And we could stand in the same power and not take from each other's power. Mm. I love you. Love you. Y'all support D, all right? Y'all support D. Y'all support D. Let's do this. Thank you, Mama. That was great. Oh, my God. Yes, it was. Yeah, No, I'm Not Okay is a production of LAS Studios. Remember to rate and review our show. I just found out that it helps other people find it. So if you like it, share it with your friends. The more people we can get to have conversations about mental health, the better. If you've got a story you want to share about how you deal with mental health issues, send it my way. Record it on your phone's voice memo app and email it to yano at lastudios.com. And be sure to subscribe to our newsletter to get the latest episodes with a note from me, recommendations from our listeners and our team, and listener stories. Sign up at las.com slash newsletters. Jessica Pilot is our talent manager and producer. Our executive producers are Leo G and me, Diane Guerrero. Web design by Andy Cheatwood at the digital and marketing teams at Southern California Public Radio. Thanks to the team at LA Studios, including Taylor Kaufman, Kristen Hayford, Kristen Muller, Michael Constantino, Robert Joe, Mildred Langford, and Leo G. And a special thanks to Brian Crawford. This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. Additional support comes from the Angel Foundation, supporting transformational leaders, and by the California Healthcare Foundation, dedicated to improving the mental health care system for all Californians.